there is a great football coach somewhere down there in Dave Aranda. And Baylor might have robbed their biggest rival in order to unlock that. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked On Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello there. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Baylor, another week of Locked On Baylor. I am your host, Cam Stewart uh, from ESPN Central Texas. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. We are still kind of Miring it here in the doldrums of what is kind of the off season in terms of what we talk about here on Locked On Baylor, but there's still so many aspects of this football season that intrigue me. You know, I don't think Baylor's going to go two and ten. I don't think they're going to get anywhere near twelve and zero. But this season for Baylor football fascinates me, not the least of which being the Gary Patterson edition, which we're going to talk about today. And speaking of additions to staffs, I mean, Baylor's got a lot of that in the men's basketball department. Uh, a lot of new faces headed to the Foster Pavilion this year. We're going to take a look at that and, and what direction this says this program is going in. And then from sticking with men's basketball, who they're going to add to the most important staff, and that is the roster, uh, because that is a big week for them as well. Starting first with the fact that it is May 6th. It's my dad's birthday. Happy birthday, dad. And I think this is important, not only because I love him, but because my dad has this weird thing where he he likes to root for private schools because he sees them always as the underdog. And so when I was like, had chosen Baylor, but hadn't gotten to Baylor yet, my dad was still like, I'll root for TCU when they're not playing Baylor. I think I'll still do that. He's like, they're the plucky underdogs, TCU, right? And I, I don't blame him for that because he didn't go to Baylor, didn't grow up in this in this rivalry, so I kind of give him a pass. Another person who didn't grow up in this rivalry is Dave Aranda. And so he went and he got the biggest, probably the biggest icon in TCU sports history and Gary Patterson to join his staff just a few months ago. And we have now seen the completion of the first you know, spring football session with Gary Patterson as a part of the Baylor staff. He's been out there. He's had he's had the hat on. He's had the, the short sleeve jacket, coach's shirt. He's had the BU on. He has performed with his guitar for some of Baylor's biggest donors. He is in this thing now. He is a part of the Baylor family. And it's still a little weird, right? It's still going to be a little weird for a lot of us even – when the first time we see him on the Baylor sideline, when when that comes, or or you know pregame out on the field at McLean Stadium wearing Baylor stuff, it's still gonna feel weird. It's gonna feel weird on November second. I think is the date when we're honoring the 2013 and 2014 Big 12 championship teams, and Gary Patterson is gonna be there, and Baylor green and gold, and then they're gonna face TCU. That's gonna feel weird. But what isn't weird? or maybe it is, depending on how you look at it, is how much he could help this team. He really could. And Dave Aranda was asked about this in the spring. Where does Gary fit into all of this? And here's what he had to say. Where do you use Gary the most? Where do you utilize Coach Patterson the most, would you say? They're, uh, um, they're in our staff meetings. I think there is... Uh, always the view of hey this is at Utah State or Wisconsin or LSU this is what we used to do this is kind of what it was I mean 2019 seems like a long time ago and um, in the college football world that's that can be very true and so it's hard to say you know it's uh, it's hard to kind of get out of your comfort zone and to uh, look at and uh, and experiment and and do things that are different but a lot of times that's what's needed um and so when there's kind of a uh, you know at the end of the road there's you know judgment day and all this other thing it's there's a tendency to kind of lean into what you've always done and, and what you what you always do and so the opportunity to kind of grow and to uh and to try new things can be a scary, scary thing. Gary helps in that. 
Uh, I think he's had a bunch of experience and stuff that's, and where, where Gary's coming from is the, probably the exact opposite of the things that defensively we've done. And so to mix and match that can be way cool, you know, as long as you're open to it and, and uh, you listen more than you talk, you know. And so I think that's happening. And uh, so I think that would be one thing. And I think the other thing, too, would be uh, for Matt Pallage and for um, Kevin Curtis, it can be uh, another set of eyes, a great wealth of experience on, um, hey, this is what we've done. This is what we've heard other people have done. How have you done it? And I think just all this experience in this league, because this league is different. I think mean, you know, the offense that we have, um, that's the... That's the, the kind of the offense of the Big 12, and uh, it's all throughout our league and all throughout our non-conference too. And, and so, uh, you know, he's got a, a fair amount of experience in defending it, and so I think he's been helpful in that too. This is interesting to me because, of course, we know there's a great mutual respect between Dave Aranda and Gary Passion. In fact, when they faced off in 2020, so the first time that Dave got to face Gary Patterson, you know, we talked about that week, how much of an influence um, that Gary had on him. You know, he would bootleg the the Gary Patterson, here's how to play defense tapes on VHS and just study over them, comb over them. And here you have two of the great defensive minds in, in college football, at least in the last decade. Obviously, Gary's resume goes farther than that. Uh, but now you have them on the same staff, and it's obviously a vague position, you know, I don't know that Gary's going to be instilling defensive game plans or whatever, but you heard what Dave had to say about it in that he kind of keeps Dave in check. You know, Aranda wants to do one thing. Gary Patterson, for most of his life and coach career, has done another thing, has done the opposite. And I, I think that is something that this team and this program needs because most of us who follow football, whether you like Dave Aranda or not, can agree. There's there's a great football mind in there. We saw it. I know it was with Matt Rule's other players. I know it was a couple years ago, but we saw it. It's there. And there are many guys who cannot make that jump to great cord from great coordinator to great head coach. You know, at Kevin Steele, a Baylor name. That's one. I mean, he was a great defensive mind forever. Did not work out as a head coach. Um you know, we, we see it all the time. Rex Ryan is a guy I think of in the NFL. And you might think that about Dave Aranda. And right now, based on his resume, that's not unfair. But so many head coaches will surround themselves with yes men, especially when it's their first job and they're trying to figure out, you know, they're trying to build it for themselves. When in reality, you should have, and it's a, it's a, it's a luxury, someone like Gary Patterson on your staff who has been there and has done that. He ain't trying to impress everybody. He's not. He he is trying to to be a coach again. I saw this interview with him, or I think it was in Sports Illustrated, um, when he was talking about the Texas job, and he was like, I, "I didn't take the UT job to to spite TCU. I took it to learn." That shows me this guy wants to coach, and what that also tells me is he's not just going to tell Dave Aranda what he wants to hear. And Dave Rand is a great defensive mind, but Gary Patterson is a hell of a football coach, a Hall of Fame football coach. You know, we talked about it when he got hired, you know, whatever, 10 times he was ranked inside the top 15, you know, had the top five defense in the country four or five times at TCU. At TCU, we forget that. Three conferences he coached in at TCU. And, you know, they were in a bad, they were in a, not a great stretch when they went into the Big 12. A couple years in a row, they weren't very great. Then they, 2013, they started to get more competitive in their games. In 2014, they finished second in the conference. So he had some pretty good success there. To have someone with that kind of success and the kind of attitude that it, he's not going to get pushed around, he's not going to be a yes man, that is exactly what I think this football program and what Dave Aranda needs. So I say... I say bring it on. I really do. Um, I think this could be a, a a big, big help towards potentially Dave Aranda saving his job and ergo, therefore, uh, Baylor getting back to competitiveness and then hopefully success here in the Big 12 Conference. 
I am sure both Dave Aranda and Scott Drew found their guys through LinkedIn Talent Solutions because it's the best place to hire. That's why when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's how you. That's why you check out LinkedIn Jobs because they find the right pros faster and for free, and they might not even le- be looking for a job. You know, Gary Patterson wasn't looking Baylor, you know, football coach job openings, but they find those candidates for you. Okay. It isn't like any other job board. You can't find it anywhere else. Over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong places. 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours on LinkedIn. They know small businesses are wearing so many hats or advisors, and that you might not have the time or resources to hire. That's why they're constantly finding new ways to make that job process easier. Uh, Two and a half million small businesses already use LinkedIn for hiring. It's the only place to go. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. So Dave Aranda made that hire with Gary Patterson a few months ago, but more recently, adding new coaches to a Baylor staff has been more of a men's basketball kind of thing. Uh, it was not for a bad reason. It's not like they were they bottomed out and they needed to clean house, uh, but rather probably a good reason because Baylor's had a great run of success over the last couple of years, and all these college basketball programs want a piece of what Scott Drew is doing, right? Like, I mean, we we literally saw it, the number one college basketball program in America. The University of Kentucky came after Scott Drew and then couldn't get him and then got one of his assistant head coaches. So you look at what what Baylor has lost. Um, Bill Peterson, who who came in around the same time as, as Jake, if I want to say, like that 16, 17, or 19, I think he came in, which again coincides with the, the massive jump that Baylor makes from pretty good to elite, right? Um, he ends up going to he he just looking for something new. He takes a job at the University of Denver, where he's uh, much closer with his family. We talked with him on ESPN Central Texas last week, um, and so he he's off to new places. And then two of your associate head coaches, John Jacobs and Alvin Brooks the third, both taking other jobs. Obviously, Alvin Brooks to Kentucky, and John Jacobs now the head coach at FAU. So that is a that's a, I've tried not to beat beat you all over the head with it but this is not a small thing that Baylor has to replace four of the five starters and basically you're three guys right there two associate head coaches and the guy below them with the most experience coaching and that's Bill Peters so you replace the three guys next to you on the bench that's a that's a big deal now i guess the the beauty of this the silver lining of this is Scott Drew's been through this before because he has turned out great coaches. Uh, so I do trust him on this. I, I really do. Um, we look back at the, you know, Grant McCasland had had years on his staff where had, he ended up leaving in about 2013, um, has become a successful head coach since then. Matthew Driscoll, who was there at the beginning, like running the open tryouts uh, for Baylor in 2003 when Scott came along. He, he's been at North Florida for years. And of course, guys like Jerome Tang, uh, who is Scott's right-hand man forever. And then he goes to Kansas State to be the head coach. And I think a lot of us were thinking, boy, what, what do they do now? What do they do without Jerome Tang? This is Scott's guy, right? This is his right-hand man. And what's funny is two years later, the guys he replaced Tang with are now off to uh, other jobs. Uh, you could argue Alvin Brooks the third, a bigger job uh, at Kentucky, and certainly for John Jacobs to go from an associate to a head coach. So it, it's like Scott Scott knows what he's doing here. Um, and so all that to say, Friday, so since we last spoke, you loyal locked on Baylor listeners uh, that have basically been a whole new staff. So let's go over exactly who is going where. So there are promotions, of course. Most of these are promotions. Um, Jared Nunes goes to full on assistant coach, um, 15th season, by the way, longest tenured guy on the staff, Jared Nunes. Valpo, great Jared Nunes. Uh, congratulations to him. Um, then you've got. Jason Smith being promoted. That's general manager. 
um, guys behind the scenes who you don't see a lot of. Ty Beard with a promotion, director of basketball ops. Love that for Ty Beard. I mean, that's a that's a Baylor guy. That's a Waco guy. Some strong Baylor ties. He wanted to be here, and now he's got a, a good promotion to go along with it. And he is the director of basketball ops because the former guy at that position, Tweedy Carter, Baylor great, has been promoted to assistant coach. This was the big one, I think, for a lot of Baylor fans because we remember that Tweedy was such an electric player for the Bears. And really, I, before I get to the rest of it, I, I thought about this over the weekend, like, what an what an integral part of this greatest rebound in college basketball history Tweety Carter was. Um, this is obviously a little before my time as a Baylor fan, but going back and being able to research it, I don't I can't put the context in there. But this is a kid who comes in as the first real big recruit that Scott Drew had. I mean, McDonald's All American. He's a guy who was the most points in high school basketball history still, I think, with 7,000 points, like all these accolades. And he comes in with Baylor, who still had not made the tournament yet. They didn't have their full allotment of scholarships yet. This was the first big, big pull from Scott Drew. So you want to talk about guys who, who know the culture that you are going for and that you have and that you are trying to sustain. Exhibit A. Like Tweedy Carter held a lot of stuff together to the point where his last game against Duke is a chance to go to the final four, which still seemed light years away, I would say, for Baylor fans when when Tweedy got onto campus. And, you know, there there were some characters on those teams. There's a lot of talent, uh, but there was some there were some characters, there was some behind the scenes stuff, and Tweedy kind of kept it all together in terms of an on court standpoint. He was he was the glue. He was the guy that led that team. You know, Lace Dunn was the best shooter. Ekbe Udo was the lottery pick. Quincy Acey was a freak down low. But Tweedy Carter, undersized and all, was the, the guy pulling the strings. And so very happy for him to get that promotion. Uh, and then you have some guys coming onto the staff that, that had not been here. Um, guys like Gabe Ori joining as video coordinator. Wanted to give Gabe that shout out. Um, I, I don't know exactly what they do, but it's clearly an important position because that's what Ty Beard came from. Um, so that that's big. And then the other, the two that will also be the front row of the bench will be uh, Steve Henson, who's coming from UTSA, and Bill Armstrong coming from Link Academy. Uh, Steve Henson, great career, by the way, as a player at Kansas State, um, has coached for, oh, geez, almost you know, 25 years here. And you look at the records at UTSA and you're like, what are we getting excited about over here? And look, I get that. I get that. I think it's three straight years to end his tenure as head coach in San Antonio with 20 plus losses. So it's not great, but you also got to remember UTSA was a, a barely division one program and all its sports. When he got there, um, he, he did turn, he had like a nine, I think nine or 10 win turnaround in year one, had them playing postseason basketball. Uh, that wasn't by mistake. Obviously, his last three years are not great, but he's coming on to be an assistant, not a head coach. And he's been a pretty good assistant before. In fact, he got the UTSA job being Long Kruger's right hand man for that buddy healed Oklahoma team that went to the final four. And we we remember how good that team was. I remember how good that team was. Um, it, you know last game against Villanova, notwithstanding, uh, that was a really, really good team. Um, and so what I like about that, and maybe I'm overthinking it, but you look at that OU team, they were a three point shooting machine. Obviously buddy healed was incredible. And that was really the start. Those last couple of years of buddy healed was really the start of the big 12 becoming the conference that we know it as right now, like the no off nights, very physical, great home court atmospheres everywhere. Um, so uh, at that time, the Big 12 is raising the level, raising the bar, and basketball is changing to more of an outside game. And so to be on the forefront of that, which Lon Kruger and Oklahoma were, absolutely, uh, I, I like that. I like that. I like that Steve Henson it already kind of understands that. And then, of course, the other one being Bill Armstrong, we talked a little bit about last week. Love it. Love it. Um, because that's, you, you replace two of the best recruiters in the country and Alvin Brooks and John Jacobs. And you bring in a guy who has been on 
college basketball power five SEC benches for 15 years before going to the high school game. And then he takes over and continues a dynastic run for one of the great prep programs in the whole country in Link Academy in Missouri. Uh, that is the way high school basketball is going now. I mean, we see it with Baylor recruits every year. They end up at these schools, uh, which that's not a bad thing. I think that's a great thing for right now. Obviously, Coach Jacoby Walter in high school, they won a national championship together. Um, and these are where the best players in the country are going. So you got a guy who knows exactly what players to look for, how to talk to them, how you're going to coach them, and where to look as an assistant coach because he's been on the staffs for 15 years and saw actually some pretty good success. You know, you see, oh, Ole Miss at LSU, those are football schools, but he actually had some pretty good success there. He was one of the guys behind the great Marshall Henderson run at Ole Miss and then some pretty good LSU teams. I think they made the Sweet 16, Elite Eight, one of those years, 2019, uh, with Will Wade. So, Guy with experience at all of those levels, I will take that 10 times out of 10. So uh, this is this is where I, I mean, all facets really, where I trust Scott Drew. And I think, you know, it might not make some huge headlines now, but I think he has done a great job rebuilding this. All right, your favorite time of the episode where we take a timeout and I tell you about my favorite game going right now. That is Monopoly Go. I've talked about it a lot, but I can't talk enough about it because in Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends for those time tournaments. You work together, you build up each other's boards. The more you win together like a team, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so much to get, okay? You can get the cool new playing pieces. You can travel the boards. There's there's unique stickers. You complete the albums. You get big prizes there. You can even throw out some emojis to taunt your friends who aren't working with you when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults and take all their money. Yeah, that stuff too. Plus, it feels new. It feels exciting. There's something new every day. There's constantly changing tournaments. There's challenges. A bunch of them include their own unique mini games. There's always new timed events that help you win big. They've got massive multipliers for everything you win. They've got rent frenzies, all of it. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench and go download it now for free on Google Play or the App Store. That is Monopoly Go for free on Google Play and the App Store. I trust Scott Drew to the highest degree when it comes to adding these coaches, and I also do trust him to add the right pieces out of the transfer portal. Um, it's just juggling those two at the same time is a lot. It's a lot on a coach, and, and you know, if, if Scott Drew was out there looking for other coaches. Typically, you can lean on your associate head coaches to, to do some heavy lifting, but proof was in the pudding. Both those guys are on to new jobs. So um, like what they've done with the coaching staff, but this is a big week for player staff, I like to call it, and that's adding guys out of the portal. Uh, there's been you know a lot of hype, a lot of smoke around this, this transfer portal class, but right now it's one guy in, in Jeremy Roach, who I think is a terrific player and a great addition. Um, no faults with that, but I, obviously you need a little bit more. Uh, Trezarian White was a wing who I had pointed to as a guy I would really like for Baylor. Uh, he's a he's a local kid up in Mansfield, went to Collin County, um, had gone to UNCW, that's where he's at right now, and had Baylor on his final three that he tweeted out last week. And suddenly he's scheduled four visits and not one of them is Baylor. So probably out on that. Um, that usually means a good thing for a program like the Bears. It means they're probably getting someone even a little bit better. But this is the big week. And I had the tweet out on Friday that they were going to sign a center this weekend. And as I record this on Sunday right now, uh, probably not going to happen this weekend. I, I did get the timeline kind of wrong, but... I wasn't going to delete the tweet, but you know, I have to stand by it. That was, that was my reporting, my error. So, um, there is something in the works for a center. Um, obviously because Scott drew always has something in the works. It's, it's just going to come probably this week. And I imagine you'll probably see more than one commitment this week. That's, that's not from my inside Intel. That's just me saying this is, this is the time. Um, and 
the Trezarian White thing with him saying, I'm not going to visit Baylor anymore, does, does kind of ring the alarm bells to me that this is probably a good thing. I think White's a good player. I really, I mean, he's averaging over 20 points a game and, and shooting 40% from three as a wing guy. That's exactly the kind of player you, that you'd want, but him saying, I'm not visiting Baylor anymore. Uh, Baylor doesn't lose out on that anymore unless they've got some bigger fish cooking in the oven. If any of that analogy made sense. So, uh, this is the week to look out for obviously starting center and wing potentially starting wing. Um, you need a guy who can go out there and at least platoon with Jason Asimoda. Um, and speaking of that Bill Peterson interview that we had last week uh, on ESPN Central Texas, he had said the biggest thing for Baylor, he did not say center. He said the biggest thing, you need a, you need a wing who can shoot the three because that's what Baylor's had the last couple of years with Matthew Meyer and with um, and with Jalen Bridges to like an all Big 12 degree. And that that is something that is key for this offense to keep humming the way that it will. And I think more so at the wing position rather than center, those guys are easier to find in the portal, especially at a lower level. Um, you know, centers have a lot more to adjust to in terms of the physicality of things. Of course, you need to do that at the wing position too, but if you can shoot, we're going to find time for you to play. And that's, that's key to stretching out defenses. And so that's, and it's a more important, it's a more important position in today's college basketball. So Things coming down the pike for Baylor. Things are cooking in the kitchen for Baylor. We just got to wait for it to come together this week. And I'm sure we will have commitments this week. And therefore, I will have updates for you at every step of the way. Because we're the only place that is giving you nothing but Baylor Athletics news five days a week. That ain't coming straight from the university. Okay? And we're proud of that. So thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. Get involved in the comments. That's why I love this, getting this community involved. And we're talking about, you know, let me know what you're thinking about for transfer portal targets. Let me know what you're thinking about having Gary Patterson here and if you're still not over it. I get it. Okay? And what you think about this new Baylor basketball staff. Drop that down in the comments below. We will be back tomorrow. I will once again thank you for making it your first listen today and every day, and we will have the updates as they come here on Locked On Baylor.